the scariest killers, judges, fear. Some criminals get a hair length close to sending a judge over the edge. Just like Daryl Brooks, who not only got on the nerves of a judge, he pounded his fist, frankly, it makes me scared. But on the nerves of everyone involved in the crime in any way, even viewers. Please you are being disrupted, you, you know, are being disrespectful, you're always the gonna find some reason to say. With no grounds for debate, Brooks was responsible for the Walkershaw Christmas Parade attack when he ran through a parade with his car, killing six and injuring 62. There was no doubt Brooks was guilty, as he was caught red-handed, so you'd think he would try to keep the losses to a minimum in court, but some people are stubborn against their own good. In court, Brooks kept giving comment after comment, criticizing the judge's decisions. The witness's answers may stand. I mean, yeah, he overruled every objection. What's even crazier is his objecting to every word his own victim was saying, refusing to take responsibility for a man whose life he destroyed. Mr. Brooks, you are advised to stop with the commentary. No, I'm gonna say what I want. You called this witness. I'm gonna take a break right now and excuse the jury and this witness. The judge kept getting more and more irritated as Brooks kept mumbling and commenting, ultimately calling the judge's overruling of his ridiculous objections judicial misconduct. Not sure where he learned that word from, though. What you're doing is judicial misconduct. Judicial misconduct. Those with legal knowledge analyzed Brooks' behavior and concluded that he wasn't just trying to be annoying for the sake of being annoying, but his strategy was to provoke the judge so that she'd make a mistake and earn himself an appeal. Not on this super judge. With nerves of steel, though. Sorry, Daryl. In another instance, Brooks would not be quiet during the DA's speech. This is the so alleged record of ableless Stop talking. Man. Come on, man. After interrupting the DA more times than the kid in maths class trying to score one on the teacher, the judge threatens to kick him out. One more interruption and you're going to be removed to the next courtroom. That's what you want to do anyway. His response? Stare horrifically at her. As if that's going to change things other than taking a break. His laser eyes didn't seem to work though, as Brooks still received six life sentences. 150 years for six counts of hit and run, and 762 years for 61 counts of reckless endangerment. Now, while justice was served, Brooks did manage to spook the judge, as she took a break and flat out admitted that this was making her scared. All right, I need to take a break. This man right now is having a stare down with me. It's very disrespectful. He pounded his fist. Frankly, it makes me scared. Speaking of judges with nerves of steel, some have to confront downright monsters, like Bryce Rhodes who continued his streak of crimes all the way to the courtroom. So you're out. saying you're gonna find out where I'm out? No, 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 you gotta find me, I'll be out. Perhaps the most disrespectful defendant ever in court, his trail of bodies started in Louisville, Kentucky in May 2016, when he brutally murdered 40-year-old Christopher Jones, believing him to be another man with a bounty on him. Bryce didn't realize that the world was way past the Old West, however, and also murdered the only two witnesses to the crime, teenagers Larry Ordway and Maurice Gordon, whose bodies were found stabbed and burned. Unfortunately for everyone else, though, being arrested and tried was only the beginning, as Bryce's actions in court were also criminally infuriating. Okay. 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 That's what I want to do. Well, do what you want to do. That's fine. Let's get that understood. I'm sorry? Let's get that understood. In one instance, Bryce shamelessly taunted a victim's family, going as far as blowing them a kiss and wiping off his shoulder while the judge was speaking. He keeps turning. He keeps turning. Ma'am, I told you once before, let me, let me please help you understand. You can't just talk out like that. Now, he wasn't held in contempt as anyone's guess, and the judge got just as much criticism for his lack of action against Bryce. During another trial, Bryce was forced to wear a spit mask as he walked in. It's not hard to guess why. But it's even crazier that it was an attorney he spat on. Even during that trial, Bryce cursed up a storm, constantly interrupting the judge, who also didn't hold him in contempt. You have been... Are you done? No, I'm done. Feeling like he had free reign to do or say whatever he wanted, it got to the point of actual threat when Bryce told the judge he would find out where she lived 
and show up there. So you're yeah. saying you're gonna find out where I'm out? No, no, no. You got Sammy, I'll be up. Okay. With every single person involved in the case probably wanting to get rid of Bryce forever, the case is still open till December 2023. But the death penalty is rightfully on the table. Seriously. If he doesn't get it for what he did in 2016, anyone would gladly give it to him for what he did in court. While some criminals like Bryce Rhodes are completely uncooperative, some are strangely easy in their cases. Like Jeremy and Christine Moody who are a complete head-scratcher, given the fact that they are neo-Nazis who killed a sex offender, but were strangely obedient and friendly in court. In South Carolina, the Moody's enacted vigilante justice when they tracked down known sex offender Marvin Charles Parker and brutally murdered him in his home in July 2013. However, it wasn't just Parker they murdered, but also his 51-year-old wife Gretchen, who is officially innocent of any crimes. The Moody's were part of a white supremacist group known as Crew 41, and their tattoos made it much easier for them to get arrested and tried. And this is where this story takes a wild turn. While you'd expect white supremacist neo-Nazis to be just as bad as anyone else on this list, they immediately apologized, talked about God's forgiveness, and pleaded guilty. And I believe that God has forgiven me of it. I want the court to know that I've lost everything that matters to me, my children, my wife, and my family. I am weary of my crying, my throat is dry. If you think all of this sounds twistedly wholesome, they took it a step further by kissing each other when they both received life sentences for their murders. Convinced that what they did was right, they labeled the day they killed Parker as the happiest day of their lives, and even offered up the name of another sex offender they were going to kill. They got exactly what they deserved. Had to do it over again. I killed more. I have no regrets. Killing that pedophile was the best day of my life. If you're confused as to what you're supposed to be thinking about them, you're not wrong. But it's still important to remember they killed an innocent woman in Gretchen. And, well, you know, the fact they're neo-Nazis. While ones like the Moody's seemed easy enough to deal with, what do you do with a real-life supervillain? Like Nico Jenkins, whose story is so insane you'd think it came straight from a horror movie. Jenkins began his spree of crimes ever since the age of seven. But things only got worse and worse for him getting in and out of prison until August 2013, when he decided to rain terror on Colorado with the inhumanly brutal murders of Juan Uribe Peña, Jorge C. Cajija Ruiz, Curtis Bradford, and Andrea Kruger. The victims were shot, some even as brutally as getting 12-gauge shotgun wounds to the face. Out of the four victims, Bradford was the only one in relation to Jenkins. Despite the fact that Jenkins was on a serial killing spree, no less than someone as notorious as the Zodiac Killer, he was arrested for something else entirely. Terroristic threats. Which isn't surprising coming from him. And he still admitted to the four murders after a grueling eight-hour interview. This is not just some psycho killer that just wanted to go trophy. I'm documenting psychiatrically disordered. Mm -hmm. I'm documented, chemically imbalanced. This is a fact. I got you. What do you mean you got me? I got your DNA at the murder scene. I got your DNA in the car. While all of this sounds like a traditional serial killer story, Jenkins takes the insanity level to extremes, claiming that everything he did was in service of the Egyptian god, Apophis. Even in court, Jenkins, while defending himself, would suddenly switch to his Apophis voice, who apparently needed him to kill innocent people for no reason. Some god that is. Clearly very mentally unwell, Jenkins just had one more weird card up his sleeve in court, flat out asking for the death penalty. Apophis must have heard his wish too, and he was gladly granted it in protection of literally everyone else he would ever come across, including fellow prisoners. At case CR 13-2768, count one, murder in the first degree, a class for class one felony, death. While ones like Jenkins are scary, some are downright comedic. Like Alan McCarty, who would crush a dumb things to do in court competition. F you, you f***ing n***er! You saw me swear on 
I'm not under oath. This tantrum-throwing defendant shot himself in the foot and landed in court for literally calling a courtroom to threaten to kill a judge outside. It's hard to understand a criminal's mentality, but even a criminal would think this is extremely dumb. Yeah, I want to report a crime that's about to happen. I got a f gun pointed at your f building. Why would he threaten a judge, you might ask? Because she ruled against him in a custody case. No wonder he didn't get the kids. If you think the phone call was bad, the trials were even worse, to the point where it felt like something out of a comedy movie. McCarty was sitting there flipping through pages of a book he definitely didn't read, when all of a sudden he blows up yelling at the judge and cussing them out. Directly in an what a bunch of f guys, you stupid piece of Obviously, he got escorted outside the courtroom, yet he continued his tantrum from outside to the point where the judge was holding back laughter as McCarty kept yelling in another room. During another hearing, McCarty really let his thoughts be known on the custody case and how unfair it was to, apparently, only him. You won't allow my paperwork, y'all took all my court paperwork, and when, the, when they all come in here, I'm gonna say the same thing. So let's bring them in. Quit wasting my time and bring them in so I can tell them the same thing. After yelling, cursing, racially slurring, he was escorted out again. Mother take all my paperwork so you, I can't show these people. You wanna take all my paperwork from me? Lock me in a cell naked all night? Maybe timeout doesn't work for this one. And he really gave up his right to remain silent, to the detriment of everyone else's ears.